float with Henry Morgan. Captain Morgan becomes certain in his mind that the girl he knows as Antoinette de Lacey is an imposter. So he and Colonel Atterbury return to the grounds of Sir Thomas Modford's home to await her return. Meanwhile, Dolores and Dietz, having obtained the Aztec necklet from Morgan's cabin, join Kitty outside the Dolphin Tavern and wait to betray Jeffrey Hunter to the authorities. When Jeffrey arrives, Kitty gives a signal to the men to arrest him. When it is too late, Kitty realizes what she has done and a wave of remorse and hysteria sweeps over her. Dolores quietly threatens Kitty that unless she pulls herself together, she will have a death more terrible than she could ever imagine. Who are you to speak to me in this way? It does not matter who I am. You will just do as you are told. Go back into the tavern as the art says. Wear the necklet. Go to your quarters. Take the necklet off and return to your duties. That is all that you have to do. Yes, all right. And remember, there is to be no nonsense, no foolish behavior. The affair is now taken out of your hands. Now go and carry out our orders. Yes. Yes, I'll go. Good. Now, Diaz, back to the carriage. <laughs> you are wonderful in dealing with Kitty Dolores. How did you manage it? Oh, it is all very simple, Diaz. Kitty belongs to a superstitious race. The fact that a masked woman would speak to her like I did was enough to put terror into her heart. Have no fear. She will do exactly as she is told. Then we have no need to worry about anything, huh? Wait. I've told her to carry out your instructions. But I have no idea as to why you wish her to do that. I've had to trust you up until now, Diaz, so I will have to trust you further. Will you tell me why you wish her to return to the Dolphin Tavern wearing the necklace? Yes, surely the reason is obvious. The necklace was stolen this evening, and her disappears. It is well known all over Port Royal that Kitty holds Hunter in affection. Tonight, a hundred men shall see her walk through wearing the necklace. A hundred men will remember Kitty wearing it. Hmm? And a hundred men will believe, now that Hunter has disappeared, that Hunter took it to give to Kitty. But once Morgan knows that Kitty has the necklace, do you think he will sit back and not try to see her? Of course he won't. He will not rest until he has seen her. Hmm. And not as simple as all that, Dolores. Kitty will not be found in the morning. Oh, then you are going to take her tonight. Is not that a risk? You know there might be a week's delay before the ship from Cuba calls to take her off this island. I know. But we had to take the Aztec necklace tonight, and we have to take Kitty tonight. Yes, but where are we going to take her? Oh, <laughs> that is very ironical. Overlooking the swamps, there is an old stone hut. It's been deserted for years. It is there that I shall take Kitty. And why is that ironical? Because the swamp over which the hut looks will be the place that Jeffrey Hunter is sent to work. That is the place where all the escaped convicts are sent to die. In that hut she will stay until we leave Jamaica. And the Aztec necklet? <laughs> then, my dear Dolores, we stay in my possession until we are on the high seas. Your Kitty and me. It will remain in my possession, my dear Dolores, until we are inside of Cuba. And what of Kitty? Kitty was being caught up in a violent maelstrom of emotion. As though hypnotized, she returns to the Dolphin Tavern. Everything has happened so quickly, her mind is dulled by pain and fear. Tears are smarting her eyes. An unknown terror has laid its icy fingers in her heart. The cold, merciless words spoken to her by the masked woman has brought to her mind all the superstitions born generations back in her Irish ancestry. Hardly conscious of what she is doing, dimly aware in that Irish psychic way that her fate is destined. She threads her way through the dirty, littered tables, passes the foul-mouthed, oathing men, not conscious that a hush falls suddenly over the place. The reflections from the smoking, flickering oil lamps, which dimly pierce the tavern's gloom, have picked out the dazzling brilliance of the necklet, which nestles in the whiteness of Kitty's throat. With the glory of a setting sun, it twinkles like an enchantress's eye in the gloom of the dingy surroundings. Not a man in the tavern has not heard of the Aztec necklet and those to whom it belongs. A hundred pairs of eyes follow her. Their expressions change for the moment from greed to amazement. And then as their dull brains register the fact, a new expression creeps in. Ugly smiles creep over their face. Tongues gently moisten lips. For Kitty, unaware of the fact, wears the necklet like an ancient Irish queen. But not one man puts forth a hand to detain her. 
for when the pack is in full cry, the first who makes the move is torn to pieces by the others. Suddenly a gently swaying curtain catches Kitty's eye. It's the curtain which covers the alcove, the alcove wherein Geoffrey had taken her in his arms. With the pain of a searing hot iron, the memory of it comes up from the deep recesses of her mind. She tastes once more his kiss, feels the bruising pressure of his lips, feels the strength of his arms, the hunger in his heart. Oh, Geoffrey, Geoffrey, why, why have I done this to you? But the tavern brings forth no answer, because she knows the answer. And the actions of hate and jealousy which are once sped can never be recalled. With a strangled sob in her throat, the damned up emotions are released, and with tears upon her cheeks, she goes to her humble quarters. And on the other side of town, in a verminous, damp cell, chained by the ankle to the stone wall, is Geoffrey Hunter. It is dark, pitch black. Time loses its relativity. It ceases to exist. There is just blackness, dampness, and rats. So you've come back to make sure I'm still here. You'll be learning soon, Hunter. And it's wiser for a man in your position to keep his mouth shut. What do you want? Well, I recognize you now. You're the man who arrested me. For the moment, the brilliance of your lantern rather blinded me. I couldn't make you out. If you're wise, you'll answer a few questions. Now, don't try any lies, because for the last hour I've been talking to someone. Someone who knows you very well. Yes? I had him brought here to the jail especially, just to tell me what he knows about you and your past history. Sent out from England on a convict ship, weren't you? To whom have you been speaking? Ah, you must know him. Didn't he recognize you earlier in the Dolphin Tavern? A man named Glegg. It was he who put your little game away, wasn't it? What else did you learn from him? I learned that you were sent out not so very long ago. I think I can explain your brief reign of liberty. The convict ship was due here and never arrived, lost in a cyclone. It was thought all hands were lost. You were aboard that, weren't you, Hunter? How did you get ashore? Did any others get away with you? By heavens, man, will you answer me? I'm not admitting anything. Don't you realize what you're going to? What's going to happen to you? We treat escaped convicts and escaped slaves the same way as we treat murderers. You're going to your death, Hunter. You're going to work in the swamps. You know how long a man lives there. If he lives ten days, we think he lives to a ripe old age. The alligators don't get him. The snakes do. The cards are stacked against you, Hunter. Now, why don't you be reasonable and listen to me? Give me the information I require, and who knows? I might be able to make it a little easier for you. Now, tell me about that ship that went down. Did any others come ashore with you? I am not such a fool as to tell you, mister. There's nothing that you can do to save me from going to the swamps. You just want me to tell you so as to make your task easier. I'm not going to do it. If you want to know anything, you can find out for yourself. All right, Hunter. You'll get everything that's coming to you. You can have no idea of the hell you're going to, the pain and the humiliation you're going to suffer. I'll risk that. You seem pretty sure of yourself, don't you? You think there might be something to stop you going there, eh? I have friends. There's not a person on this island who can stop your going just where you're going tomorrow. <laughs> I think we can congratulate ourselves on a successful evening, Delares. It has all taken longer than I thought. The hour must be late. Oh, I hope Sir Thomas Mothford doesn't realize the time I reach home and start asking me awkward questions. Now, Diaz, we have to keep our heads. Nothing must go wrong in the next week before the ship comes to take us to Cuba. What about the necklace? I have no fear. It will not remain long in Kitty's possession. It had better not. Too many people saw her wearing it tonight. Too many others are anxious to get their hands on it. Tell me, what is your program? Are you returning to your ship? Later, yes. But first of all, I have to deal with Kitty. You see, she will finish her duties in the tavern not long before dawn, and then she's free to retire to her quarters for a few hours. When she goes there, 
I'll be waiting for her. And in the grey light of dawn, I'll take her to the hiding place. There she will be kept prisoner till our ship sails for Cuba. Yes, and then... And then what is done, when all that is done, I return to the ship. I'll express surprise and, and dismay when Captain Morgan finds the body of Matthew and discovers that the naglet is missing. Well, it is almost dawn, dear. Goodbye now. Play your part well, and we will succeed in everything. <laughs> And I know you'll not try to betray me because I hold the Aztec necklace. It's getting muted late, Morgan. I'm getting cramped crouching here in these bushes. Yes, that I know. I'm getting worried, Colonel Atterbury. Do you think the girl has somehow managed to give us the slip and is already in the house? No, that couldn't be possible. What the devil the girl could be up to. Listen. The carriage returning at last. It's still a long way off. The noise carries at this time of day over great distances. Look, Colonel. On the veranda not far from the front door, there's a green sun curtain. What say we go there? We'll be able to observe this woman at much closer quarters. Do you think she will see us? No, it'll be very dark there. But she'll be standing under the hanging lantern when she opens the front door. All right. Let's run across now. All right. I only hope we have the time to conceal ourselves before she arrives. Yes. It's still some way off. Just past the front door and we'll be in the shelter of the curtain. What the devil? Colonel Atterbury. Captain Morgan. What in the name of thunder are you doing here? This is an unforeseen circumstance. Dolores is about to arrive, but should she find Sir Thomas, Morgan, and Colonel Atterbury talking at this late hour, surely her suspicions must be aroused. Don't miss the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.